I'm not from New York City. I'm from a small town in Western New York State. I call it New York country. <laughs> Out where I'm from, there's two kinds of guys. Guys who go hunting and guys who go hunting. <laughs> now, do you know the difference between hunting and hunting? Hunting is for the good of the animals. You gotta kill some deer in the fall to have enough food for the others to eat in the winter. That's hunting. Hunting? That's a little different. Hunting involves liquor and flashlights. <laughs> You're put on two lane county road and you see a sign with a bunch of bullet holes. That's hunting right there. <laughs> Stop this truck, I'm gonna shoot something. No, you yield. <laughs> We ended up buying a piece of land in Georgia and uh, it was in the middle of the woods and they tore down some woods and they built us a house right in the middle of the woods. And we have deer. I thought this is gonna be amazing. I'm gonna hunt these deer in my own yard. I have a daughter who's 14. She goes, no, those are my deer. <laughs> she feeds them corn. She, she named them after her grandmother. And that was the end of hunting deer in my own yard. I joined a hunt club. It's an hour south of where I live. I got to get up at four o'clock in the morning. I drive all the way down there. I climb that tree in the dark. I sit there for four hours. I don't see a thing. I drive all the way home. They're standing in the driveway. <laughs> What's up? Where you been? We're on base. <laughs> Go tell that little girl we're out of corn. <laughs> I was home a couple weeks ago. <laughs> uh, my wife and I were in the kitchen. She has expectations of me because I'm the man of the house. She saw a mouse. She looks at me, she goes, kill it! I go, I can't reach that thing from on top of this chair. <laughs> she goes, you hunt deer. I go, get the rifle, I'll blow his head off. I ain't getting off this chair. <laughs> My brother goes hunting all the time. He's always gonna brag about the animals that he's killed. He's gonna tell you how far away it was and what caliber of gun he used. He goes, yeah, I got that moose from 400 yards with a seven millimeter. I go, yeah, I got that mouse from eight feet with 30 out six. I was at the mall back home a while ago and I saw this store. I got to tell you about this. It's called Build a Bear. You guys ever heard of this? Basically, the concept is simple. I just explained the kids build the bear, they make it. They make it. They learn valuable lessons like. How to cut out the middleman. I don't know, but kids love this store. <laughs> so this actually gave me an idea for a company. Uh, this is the end of a joke. I just want to do my pitch and see if maybe you're interested. I'm going to use this opportunity, okay? I'm going to get a store in the mall, and I'm going to call it. You ready? You ready, sir? Sir, come on. Jump on this steamrolling train. What am I saying? Uh, I'm going to call it Catch and Dress a Squirrel. <laughs> Hold on, hear my pitch. In this squirrel, I got like, in this store, I got like 30 or 40 wild squirrels just running around. What you do, you, you bring your kid to pay a small fee, and I give you like a bucket and a stick. And you go get one, get them in the bucket. You can have fun, throw the bucket, I'm not looking. Bond with your kid. That's phase one. Get them in the bucket. Fair warning though, they hate buckets. Phase one, phase two is you bring them up to me at the counter, and listen to this, I got a bunch of outfits, little squirrel outfits. I got like astronaut squirrel, baseball playing squirrel, French maid squirrel for the fellas. I don't know, I got it all. Now here's the part where I lose investors. Squirrels, they just don't willingly like, mm -hmm, like put on a jean jacket, right? So I gotta find a way to calm them down, <laughs> relax them, don't worry, the kids don't see this. I take them in back and you know, I punch it in the face, I knock it out. And then they're much easier to get dressed.
And then I bring them out to him, like, here you go, here's, here's Elvis Presley squirrel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> but for legal reasons, I do have to issue the fallen warning. Eventually, this hunk of burning love, he will wake up. And if you thought he was mad before, <laughs> when he was in the bucket, you wait till he wakes up and he's got sideburns glued to his face. It's gonna be big. My stepdad married my mom in a camouflage tuxedo. <laughs> she, she wore bright orange. That's a hunting joke. Thanks for not getting it. 21, you didn't get the hunting joke. Meet me and the eight people who did out front after the show. We're going snipe hunting. You ever been snipe hunting landing? Oh, you're gonna put my underwear on your head. It's a bird fish. Runs across surfs to the ground. That boy has no idea what y'all are laughing at. I just want you to know. You bring a stick, a flashlight, a bag, and a number two pencil. My favorite story about my father, my favorite story to tell, um, not you, the real one, is uh, we, were, we were hunting. I was 12 years old. It's the only time I've ever been hunting. Any hunters? Any hunters? Any hunters? Any, any hunters? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My dad's a big hunter. Like, lives in Huntsville, Alabama. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's serious. We can't take him to the zoo. Right? That's how big he is. I'm going to shoot that black and white horse. That's a zebra. You cannot have that. First time I went hunting was the last time I went hunting. I was 12 years old, we didn't shoot any deer, right? But my dad got hit by a bolt of lightning. <laughs> it is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> funniest thing. If you have never seen someone get hit by a bolt of lightning, I challenge you to fill your friend's pockets with quarters. <laughs> and just leave them in a field and watch the magic happen. It was insane. How it, I was just minding my own business, tracking this deer, and then boom, shot him back. He hit a tree, fell face down in some leaves, right? And I was like. <laughs> oh, are you okay? Oh, I'm gonna be there as soon as my ears stop freaking ringing, man. I would have made it to him first, too. I would have made it, except the deer we were tracking turns around, walks over to my dad and goes, how's that feel, jerk? Is that fun when God goes hunting, is it? No! <laughs> I think that's what he said. I, I, my ears weren't working very well. My ears weren't working very well. So... <laughs> I wasn't me. Why, why was I talking about that? Um, oh, because I don't want to offend anybody, but is it okay to talk about hunting? Like, is it okay? Yeah, okay, I figured. You guys have great hunting up here, and I'm a big hunter. I got a 10-point buck this year. Uh, yeah, and it did not mess my truck up like I thought it was going to. <laughs> that was some good eating. <laughs> Once I scraped it off. But anyway... <laughs> But my dad and I, was, we grew up very poor, like really poor, you know, like we had to eat cereal with a fork to save on milk. And, uh, <laughs> everybody get it that's gonna get it, okay. <laughs> no child left behind, okay, so. But my dad and I were reminiscing because I told him about the buck I got and my dad and I were, because we grew up very poor so we had to hunt and we would go duck hunting. And I'm sorry if that offends anybody in this theater tonight, but that is a beautiful father-son moment. Duck hunting in the morning, the sun would be coming up, my dad and I would be hiding under the slide by the swing set. And <laughs> I'd be tearing off the bread, the ducks would come waddling out. <laughs> Quack, quack. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> you know I'm kidding. Okay. 
they didn't waddle like that. So, <laughs> anyway, I shared all this with the Texas National Vegan Society. <laughs> They got so angry. I wasn't even thinking it through. They got mad. They threw organic tomatoes at me, and yeah. But they were vegan, so they weren't strong enough to hit the stage. So, they... I have a theory why men like to hunt and fish, though. I think men hunt and fish because if guys are going to spend a lot of time together, just two of you in some remote place, just the two of you alone, something eventually has to end up dead. Yeah. Otherwise, it starts to feel too much like a date. It does. Most men cannot go up to their friend, hey, do you want to get up really early tomorrow and go row a boat around the lake for a couple hours? We'll sit close and whisper. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> but you throw in, I'll bring my gun in case we see a duck. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's go for the weekend, just us. I mean, yeah, 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 men are uncomfortable, but you, yeah, the guys fishing, you just tow, you don't have to have, get, have good bait, just tow a string with a hook on it, just remember, we could do this for hours, we're going to catch a big one, <laughs> pull the string out, are we done? No, I just thought we'd kind of paddle about for a bit, <laughs> put the string in, it feels better, I feel more comfortable with the string. <laughs> so, we've been dating like about 10 months, we fell in love, we got engaged about a year, and it's time to meet the whole family. And she can meet my family pretty much in a booth at Denny's. <laughs> pretty much where we, it happened. But we have to fly back to Tennessee. There's a lot of people, they have their own family, so we're flying back, and I said, hey, um, what are we gonna do? We're only here for three days. How are we gonna meet, it? how many houses is that a day? That's gonna be in a little awkward. Just taking hands and then going, and she, oh no, on Saturday, I invited everybody hunting. I said, oh, that's not awkward. God, I've never been hunting. And she goes, oh, that's okay, it's the South. Everybody's gonna bring a guest gun. <laughs> okay. And so we all show up, we're showing up. I meet 38 of her family members, we're all showing up. Everybody is wearing orange, apparently, and I have a gun, and, and I'm holding it, you know, up. The business end is not pointing at anybody, you know, because the big goal of the day, not shoot anybody that's wearing orange. <laughs> that's my goal anyway. And we're in a big meadow, and we're going to walk through the meadow into the woods, and we're going to shoot stuff that's not wearing orange. <laughs> they didn't get the memo. And then all of a sudden, as we're about to start, a bunny runs the... I, I'm not going to call him a bunny. That's too cute for the story. <laughs> A rabbit makes the really bad choice of running across a meadow that is filled with 39 people with guns, of which 38 know how to use them. And my wife sees it first and steps up and yells, mine. And I'm like, oh, 100 yards away, kills that rabbit dead, one shot. Yeah, right. I'm telling you, and if you're going to kill something, killing it dead, that's the way to do it. <laughs> and I am like, oh. We had been dating a year. You would think being an expert with a rifle might have come up. <laughs> like when I was bragging about being pretty good at ping pong. She might have just slipped in. I can shoot a rabbit from 100 yards with one shot. <laughs> That's what. Then I find out, so I'm super impressed. And she's what? She goes, oh, uh, you know, the family rule. And she walks out. Now I got to dress it. And I'm like, oh, and I'm sticking with her because I don't know how the teams are going to divide, but I want to be on her team. <laughs> anything goes wrong, I'm with her. And I'm like, oh, hey, I don't know anything about this. And... Let me just say, dressing a rabbit, not like dressing a Barbie. <laughs> so she just whips out this big old knife out of nowhere. I'm a little terrified, you know, and she starts skinning the rabbit. And I'm like, oh. 
And she looked up and she goes, oh, honey, I'm sorry. Did you want to keep the feet? They're supposed to be good luck. And I said, they weren't for the rabbit. And he has four of them. That superstition is as dead as the rabbit to me. So I found out in a five minute period of time that my wife not only is an expert with a rifle, but that she knows how to skin a rabbit. I did a hunting and fishing expo in Fort Smith, Arkansas last month, and uh, I don't recommend it. <laughs> I walk out, it was 500 people in the dark, head to toe camouflage, all of them camouflage. I didn't know what to do. I was like, almost didn't see you there. Nothing, I got nothing from these people. And uh, it wasn't a cool stage either, like this with the cool curtain stuff. It was like uh, sheet metal screwed to the wall and then deer and elk heads screwed to the sheet metal, just staring at me the whole time. They had a stuffed turkey, a wild turkey, at the mic stand just... <laughs> I'm not supposed to acknowledge this turkey, just tell my jokes like it's not there. I felt like that turkey story needed to be told. <laughs> so I wrote a song for those guys that night. I thought I'd play it for y'all here. Uh, this is my turkey song and I hope you enjoy it, but I'm really not counting on it. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, he's got a gun! The next song I want to do. <laughs> There's another verse, but we don't have time. Uh, we don't have time. I know Speaking of animals, uh, back on that again. Any hunters here tonight? Where are my hunters at? Yo. Animal murderer, right up front. Anybody else? <laughs> See. I'm a big guy from the South. People think I hunt. I cannot shoot an animal. I don't know how you can, but you'll love this. I said those exact same words on a ship with 2,000 people in the audience. I don't even shoot an animal. Back of the balcony, this old guy yells out, pull the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> but sir, I am not going to give you a hard time for hunting. You know why? It's legal. I believe in the law. You have a right to hunt. Go hunt. If I got a problem with it, it's my right to shut up, mind my own business, and stay home. Fair enough? Yeah. We all still friends? Yeah. Especially because you got guns. I don't want to make you mad. <laughs> well, we'll ask everybody here one small favor tonight, though. Could you please stop calling hunting a sport? <laughs> it's not a sport, it's hunting. I'm sorry, but I don't think you can call anything a sport until both teams know there's a game going on that day. <laughs> Thank you. Post a schedule, something. <laughs> Can't hunt. Last year I got a one point buck. <laughs> Would have been an eight point, but his head hit the bumper real square. <laughs> <laughs> kind of crinkled up my trophy. <laughs> Now I got a deer over the fireplace, looks like he's gonna sneeze. <laughs> the worst. Hunter, are you a hunter? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a big guy. Got the camouflage. <laughs> got the beard. <laughs> you wouldn't even need a gun. You'd be like, get in the truck. 